Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to get the best possible renders out of your Unreal Engine with path tracing. So if you're creating a new project, we're going to go to like games, make a blank project and give it a name like path tracing. And we're going to make sure that ray tracing is enabled. And this is very big because this is how you get your path tracing. If you already have a project open like I do, you want to go and make sure that you do have ray tracing enabled. So we're going to go to project settings here at the top right. And then under engine, we're going to go down to rendering. And then in rendering, we're going to go down to our uh, hardware ray tracing section. And you're going to make sure that your support hardware ray tracing is enabled. If it is not enabled, enable it now. It's going to prompt you to restart the engine. You're going to say yes, restart now. And then you're going to let it load. Once it's back, it'll try and render it's going to recompile all of your shaders leave that to work depending on how big your scene is it's going to take an hour or more and in which case you let that complete and then come back to the section which we're going to then make sure that ray trace shadows is enabled ray trace skylight is enabled and path tracing is enabled okay once that's done we're finished here we can go back out and we need to do a couple of things to set up our scene first one of the things is we're going to make sure that our skylight is set to real-time reflection. Okay, and I'll show you the difference that makes. And then you can pretty much go and enable uh, path tracing now. And I'll show you actually the difference that the skylight makes. I'm going to pop up my details panel. So we can do a couple of things full screen. So real-time, you'll see that you're going to get a very large difference in the bounces. In fact, not too much because we don't have uh, ray tracing enabled right now. So we're going to make sure that we're going to go and do that. We're going to go to our post processing volume. If you do not have a post processing volume, you can go and add one here under the add volumes post processing volume. And then under our settings, we're going to make sure that we have our Actor set to product special volume set to infinite so that it affects everywhere in our scene. And then we're going to go to reflections and we're going to set this to ray traced. And if you want to, you can set your global illuminations to ray traced as well. I wouldn't recommend this if you're working off a laptop or something like that. But if you have a beastly PC and you're willing to wait for renders, then you can set that to ray traced as well. Okay, so if we go back to our lit. We look at how much of the difference the skylight makes. You're going to see that our shadows will actually start getting global illumination in them. So it's really important to do this. So now let's go back to our path tracing. It's not too important here because the path tracing does its own global illumination bounces, but it's just good practice to make sure that you're not getting too much of a difference between the quality of ray tracing versus non ray versus path tracer. So that you can switch back to them if you so much feel like it. Okay, one of the next settings we're going to do is we're going to make sure under our post processing volume, we're going to go to our rendering features and you'll see that there's a section called path tracing here. So one of the other things you might notice is that especially say in a scene like this, especially in any reflective materials, you're going to see a lot of noise. And that's because by default, it's going to be doing 16,000 iterations, which is an almost an infinite number of iterations. It take way too long to do that. So first things first, especially if you're just navigating around your scene, I recommend enabling that and setting it to 10. And you'll see that after 10 iterations, it suddenly snaps. And that's because there is a denoiser active by default. So if you turn that off, you'll see what your scene actually looks like. So we could do like 1,000. And then you can enable your denoiser. And after a thousand cycles, it'll, you know, that's, that's something more known as, um, manageable, like 10 hundred or 200. And you'll see that after 200 iterations, denoiser will kick in and smooth. Cool. So say you wanted to see how long the render is going to take. You can use the command r dot path tracing dot progress. And if you hit space one, that'll enable it. And you'll see now when I move, you'll see that we get a progress bar. And you can tell that your scene's done when the progress bar disappears. Cool. So if you want to get rid of that, you can just switch that one to a zero. And now you won't have the progress bar up. Cool. 
So some of the other things that you can change here, a couple of ones. The only one that I'm going to go over is max bounces, and that is how many times it does almost a global illumination. So if we set that to one, you'll see that you'll get no global illumination reflections. It'll just become black. So two bounces, you'll see that your metals will start showing up and your shadows will start being a bit lighter. Three is uh, around the area that I'd recommend, maybe like five just to make it look a bit better. And about that point, you're not gonna have any more than five bounces in a room generally. Uh, so 32 by default is a bit of an overkill. So, you know, 10 if you really wanna be fancy about it. Cool. So just some uh, points. Uh, let's set this to like something a bit more manageable, like 50. Cool. So with the smoothing, you're going to lose a lot of the small detail. So if you're doing large scenes, you don't need to really worry about pumping this too much. Uh, it's just like a lot of these really small areas. Like as you zoom out, you'll see that you'll start losing that detail. Some of the other things, uh, glass materials, I'll go over that just now. Uh, but yeah, you'll you'll notice one of the big things that path tracing does is if we go back to lit, your shadows uh, will actually be reflective. I mean, will actually be transparent, which is really great. Uh, some of the downsides though, you can't have any uh, moving uh, elements because it is a, a static render. So you'll notice here, if I go back to my ray trace scene, I have um, a fake... Uh, projector doing uh, what is the what is the word refractions um, it's it's a fake refractions so you can do that with just like a, a trans uh, I've got like a projector projecting that around um, that can't happen in path tracing but what path tracing will do and I'll show you just now is that you can do real uh, refractions um, so any moving characters, any moving water, that won't uh, that won't work. So this uh, this water here is a um, animated water. You'll see that it just turns gray. It can't it can't work. So you'll need to replace that with a. Yeah, I see. If I click on it, you can see that it's an animated object. It won't work. Yeah, because path tracing is a is a static scene. Cool. So. Yeah, there is there is trade off. So, uh, you know, setting it to ray traced um, for for some renders might be optimal versus path tracing. It's up to up to you to choose. Okay, so let me see, set up another demo scene. Okay, so in this demo scene, I'm going to be going over some of the um, glass materials. Uh, one thing you will notice right off the bat is that reflections are incredibly crisp and clean. Uh, yeah, very very good. So. Wait, have you not been able to see my mouse? Oh, that might be a problem. Okay, uh, continue on. Um, you'll see here, I've got some demos of uh, uh, translucent material. On the left-hand side of the table is the old way of doing it. And on the right, you've got the newer method. You'll see that even the uh, shadows or the, the, the light coming through is now refracted into the correct, correct color. So I'll show you guys how to do that now. So when you create a new material, so let's call this one path glass. Thank you for blocking my way. So I can't see if I renamed that correct. Path glass. Okay. And I'm going to create that. And we're going to set up a blue material now for the uh, for this this crystal rod over here. Okay. So the first couple of settings that you need to do is you're going to under surface. We're going to make sure that that just says surface. Under blend mode, we're going to go to transparent. And under shading model, we're going to go to thin to transparent. And because we've enabled that, we're going to make sure that our cast ray trace shadows are on. And finally, we're going to go down to our translucency mode. And under lighting mode, we're going to set surface forward shading. Cool. The next thing we're going to need is a thin translucent material output node. You can get that by right clicking and searching for it. And that just goes underneath here. Okay, so we're going to need two colors. To get a color, we're going to hold down the number three and then click once. We're going to do that twice. And we're going to need two number one nodes. So to do that, we're just going to get hold down of one and left click. And then we're going to do that three times. Okay, so for our base color, this is the color that we want to plug in. So this is the color of the glass. 
So I'm going to set that to a blue. And this thin material here, this is the color of the shadow, the glass that it's going to be. So we can set this. I'm going to set this just to prove a point to like a more of a translucent uh, a turquoise color. Okay, and then we're going to set our roughness and our opacity to be pretty much the same number, 0, 0,05, 0, 0,05 or 0 0.05. Okay, and that's just going to give us the transparency and the reflectiveness of our material. And then finally, we're going to say how reflective this material is with a refraction of 1.4. So we're going to save that. Okay, and once that's done, we can apply that material to our little crystal. Uh, it is applied, it's not it's not blue enough. Let's see. Um, let's go with a lighter blue. There we go. Just because of the uh, yellowness of the uh, table, it's it's shifting the color a little bit, but that's how that works. So there you go. And then you get proper refractive light and everything. So yeah, definitely uh, if you have, or if you want to get tinted glass into your scene, use this method. And that's pretty much that. I moved my son, damn. So now back at this scene, now that we've got the correct glass material shaders applied, you can see that you start getting tinted glass. So you can do some really cool effects, like up at the top, you can do some frosted glass. And as light now passes through that glass, you'll start seeing that it now colorizes the light, um, what would you call that, caustics. And for the water, I just uh, darkened that color for the glass, same glass material, and you get a sort of still reflective water. So let's talk water. So anything that's animated or moving cannot be rendered in Path Tracer because it is a still frame rendering method. Uh, but what you can do is you can just get rippled water as a mesh, such as here. This is just a 3D mesh that is already like sort of got its water um, peaks uh, in it. And this is the same glass material that we were just talking about. One's only just more transparent than the other. And one of the other things that you can do is you can make it look more or less rippled by just scaling it essentially. But that's how you'll get your water is you just need a uh, sort of a ripple mesh. And uh, yeah, we can apply that pretty much anywhere. So let's go and put it in my scene over here. I need to make it really, really, really small. And there we go. So that's how you can get some good looking water with reflections in Path Tracer as well. Just get your mesh to be uh, sort of a, a pre-made water. So let's go and apply that around here as well. So I'll go and delete these three guys. Drink in my water. Jeez, what the hell? There we go. And then let's put my water on. I've actually got another, oh yeah, that is the one.
Nice. Cool, and that's water done. Cool, so that's the end of this short tutorial series. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and cheers.